Okay, so in this video, we're going to go over how to multiply radical expressions that have the same index. And remember that the index is the number that's up here. It tells you which root you're trying to find. So, for example, if I had something like, you know, the square root of 4, the square means that I'm looking for, you know, two roots, you know, something times itself, that'll give me four, and that's why they call that square. If I had something like a three there, I'd say um, the third root, you know, what times what times what will give you four. Okay, so remember that that's what the, um, that's what that little n here means. That's what the index means. And we're going to do it uh, when the indices, plural, are the same. Okay, so here's my example the square root of 20 times the square root of 7. <clears throat> now, it's a little complicated because there are two different ways to do this, right? So I'm going to do this radical perfect square uh, method first, and let me show you how it works. So, if this is my problem, and if the indices are the same, you can actually multiply the radicands underneath. So I can just go 20 times 7 and still put it under a square root sign, right? And that just gives me 140. Now, the perfect square roots um, method is really kind of uh, very, it illustrates exactly what you're going to try to do. So you're going to take 140 and you're going to try to find the perfect squares inside there. So let's go ahead and break it down into prime factors. That would be what, 2 and 70, that would be 2 and 35, that would be 5 and 7. So right away I see that there's a perfect square right there. Let me just write that down. I'm going to get 2 squared, which is just 4, which is a perfect square, times 5 times 7. So if you're taking the perfect square, and since it matches the index there, you can take the number and put it outside. Because right? the square root of 4 is just 2, so you put down 2 there. These two, unfortunately, do not have a perfect square. So you're going to keep them back under the radical. At least you don't have a perfect square that's a whole number. So we're going to go 5 times 7. And final answer there is just going to be 2 radical 35. Okay? So that's the perfect square method. You can also do it using what I call the fractional exponent method. And let me show you how that works. So again, we have a 20 and we have a 7. So second step, I'm going to actually just go ahead and do the... Um, prime factors, just like we did here, and I already have that, so I'm going to write that down here. So it's 2 squared times 5 times 7. Now, again, just for to illustrate, I'm going to put the indices there. Normally you don't put the 2 there, right, when it's a square root. We just kind of understand that it's there. And normally you don't even put a 1 for the exponent because we just understand that it's there. But I'm going to put it here so I can illustrate this method a little bit better. Now what does fractional exponents mean? It means that you're going to take these exponents and make fractions out of them. And the way it works, if you remember, is by using this formula. To change from a radical form to fractional exponents, you take the exponent in the radicand and put it over the index. So here I'm going to get 2 to the 2 over 2. Here I'm going to get 5 to the 1 over 2. And here I'm going to get 7 to the 1 over 2. Now, you don't put this back under a radical sign because this takes care of that radical sign, okay? Now, the next part in this method is that if you have whole numbers like 2 over 2 is a whole number, that goes outside the radical. So that's just 2 to the first. If it stays as a fraction, you can't reduce it any further, and it stays as a fraction less than 1, let me write that down, a fraction less than 1, 
you put it back under the radical, okay? And you just reverse the method. So 5, remember the exponent is up there, 7, the exponent's on the top, and the index is the same here, so you just put little 2 out there. And then you have the exact same thing you had over here, and it becomes 2 radical 35, okay? So just two different methods to actually solve the same things. Sometimes this fractional exponent method is easier. Sometimes these perfect square ones are easier. So if you want to learn both of them, you probably should learn both of them. The more ways you know how to do something, the more you tend to understand it. Okay, I hope that was helpful.